Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Now when he heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor David Schmidt. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the reading from Matthew today, Jesus calls his first disciples. He sees two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They're fishermen. And Jesus calls out to them and says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. There's something very strange about this. Considering that Jesus was a rabbi, it would have been expected that he had disciples, but no rabbi ever sought out his disciples. The disciple would seek out the rabbi he wanted to study under. Yet, here is Jesus doing it completely backwards. He is calling his disciples. And then when he calls to them, what happens? Matthew says, Immediately they left their nets and followed him. At that moment they became disciples of Jesus. They get a new purpose. No longer fishermen, but on their way to becoming fishers of men. And it came through a call. Jesus called and they followed. If you are a disciple of Jesus, you didn't choose him. He chose you. Through his word... And through baptism, he called you and made you his disciple. It's the radical nature of his grace. And when he calls us, he has expectations of his disciples. He demands total allegiance. Jesus didn't say to these fishermen, Sorry to bother you. Oh, I see you're fishing. I'll come back when you're not busy. Nor did the men say, Jesus, we're working now. Come back in the evening and we'll be happy to hear what you have to say. That would actually have seemed more reasonable. Do you see the radical nature of this call? Jesus calls, the disciples obey, and they literally leave the net and walk away. This is amazing. This is not how we normally live our lives. There is no planning, there is no preparation, there is no discussion. Christ calls and the men follow, and an old way of life is left behind. The same is true for us disciples today. This call to discipleship does not always fit with our schedule. This call is rarely convenient. This call challenges us to drop things that we have carried for years or maybe our whole lives. The problem is, because of our daily struggle with sin, we want to be connected to Jesus on our own terms. We want Jesus in moderation. Instead of submitting to Jesus, whose call is so powerful it changes our lives, we want to call the shots. Often we want Jesus to do for us what we want. We don't want a new purpose for our lives. We just want Jesus to fix our problems. And we don't like it when he doesn't do what we want him to do. 
But we can't say to Jesus, follow me. He's the one that says to us, follow me. He really doesn't care about our small agendas because he has something so much bigger for us. He calls us to a new life and he gives us a new purpose. He rescues us from damnation into eternal life. He brings us into his plan of salvation. He brings us into his mission to save the lost. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. These men used to catch fish, but now they are going to catch people because Jesus is interested in catching people. He came to seek and to save what was lost. He wants those who are outside of his kingdom to come into his kingdom and to live under his kingship. He wants others to know the forgiveness of sins Jesus offers through his death and resurrection. He wants others to know the joy of being children of God. He wants others to know that he is the one who opens the gates of heaven to sinners. And he has entrusted that call to you and me. He has given us a new purpose to be fishers of men. When Jesus calls us to this new life and this new purpose, he doesn't leave us alone. He gives us a community of believers. He gives us his word where he speaks his love to us. He gives us his sacraments of baptism where he calls us to discipleship and the Lord's Supper where he forgives us and sustains us in this fallen world. And the more we are connected to Jesus through these means of grace, the more we want to follow him and to live for him and share this good news of God's amazing radical love for sinners in Jesus Christ. And Jesus promises us that as we follow him and as we do his will in calling others into his kingdom, being fishers of men, he promises us that he is with us always to the very end of the age. Amen.